Meanwhile, divided reactions have continued to throw comments by American-based Nigerian beat maker and singer Sam Clef, who blamed the Nigerian movie industry dubbed Nollywood for encouraging young Nigerians to turn to ritual killing for financial improvement. The acclaimed producer, who was signed to Akon's Convict Music imprint back in 2017, alleged that Nollywood promotes fetish stuff in their movies. He wrote, and I quote, These Igbo Nollywood, English and Yoruba movies are the reason why a lot of young boys are doing rituals. They keep promoting fetish stuff in all their movies. Nigerian movie producers can do better. Everything must not be based on juju and religion. Now, while some have sided with some clef and re echoes his opinion, others believe that the ostentatious show of wealth in the music industry is what is misleading the impressionable in the society. Now, while the debate along the influence from the showbiz world continues, I'm not being joined on the show by Canadian based Nigerian filmmaker Pascal Atoma. Many thanks for joining us on the show today. All right, in the wake of the conversation around influences, do you agree that some of these contents are influencing young Nigerians negatively? Yes, um, some, I, I, yes in some parts, no in some parts. Do you understand? So the, the children, most of the children all over the world, they're influenced by what they see, they're influenced by what they watch, they are influenced for the, by the uh, information that they are able to receive it out via school, from their parents, uh, through the internet, WhatsApp. Uh, but all, there's too many information available to them. So, but let's make it particularly to the, uh, the film industry. The film movies, they are supposed to be a way of making social commentary, a way of delivering messages, or a way of telling stories that have impact. So if someone rises and says that your story has a negative impact, you should not be offended because it's, do you want to only hear about the positive side of it? Yes, I, I saw what's going on online about the juju and the Nollywood and all that. Um, I cannot categorically say that the guy is wrong. I cannot say he's right, depending on who is watching. But the only thing I can say is that it's not everyone in Nollywood that's making juju movies. I have not made Juju movies before. A lot of my friends don't make Juju movies. Do you understand? So the thing is that whatever, uh, it's actually a wake up call. People should stop looking at this from the negative angle and look at it from the positive angle. It's actually a wake up call to let the, film, the current filmmakers, the upcoming, upcoming filmmakers know that they need to dig deep and stop circulating our movies around Juju and mother-in-law problem with uh, daughter-in-law father-in-law problem, love this, love that. They need to go deeper. Do you understand? So this, Nollywood should see this as a challenge rather than an insult or something to fight the guy about. No, he said his mind, he has a right to his views. Everyone has a right to the opinion. I give you an example, music. You know, I, I have a record label. I, I listened to my boy the other day uh, uh, doing something. He was playing music. All these songs he was playing, it was either about booty bounce, booty shake, Boop bounce, boop shake. My, I will die for your love. You will die for my love. My love will die for you. Your love will die for me. So there was no content in that music. Like what um, the, the Sonio Kosuns, they did music like, we don't want to fight war again. Do you understand? So when you listen to that music, that's message. The, 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 the Miriam Makibas, they make music that has something value to the society. Uh, Bob Marley, one love keep us, you know, song about love, but in a very, in a very respectful manner, unlike what we see nowadays. So, if a young kid in my record level is listening to this and you ask him to go and write lyrics, he's gonna write towards that. When I asked him, he told me that's what he's selling. So, all of us has contributed to what we are seeing. So, it's left for us now, the producers, the movie producers, the music producers, the content producers, TV producers, so, so sit back and look at what are we feeding the public? What are we feeding the public? I have two daughters, you know, I have nieces and nephews. When they uh, turn on a, a Netflix or wherever to watch a Pascal Atoma film, what do I want them to take out of the film? All right, how do you suppose this can be checked without high-handed regulations? Uh, that, that should go to the distribution companies. Uh, the, the, the distribution companies should be uh, careful and mindful of what kind of movies they pick from producers. You understand? 
You can go and cook it as much as you want to cook it. But who is going to deliver it to the masses, to the public? So personally, I think uh, the, um, the blue pictures, the um, film ones, the silver bed, the TV uh, buyers, uh, content buyers, they should regulate what they buy. This is 2022 for Christ's sake. This is not 1950 or 1940. So what they buy can, can be regulated through that because that's the only way. Because if you want to teach a kid something, the only way you would teach the kid something that the kid will understand is to take that thing that is valuable to him or her. So the only language that these movie producers or content producers, music, television will understand is to hit their pocket. So if you go and make a useless movie, useless content, or anywhere, no content is actually useless. But content that the society, the African culture, norms and values do not actually want, or the content that we don't need, that will not help the growth of Nigeria and the growth of Africa. The distribution companies in place should say, no, we don't want this. Because if they don't want it, how are you going to distribute it? All right, many thanks again for joining us on the program, Pascal Atuma.